Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Master. Safe is one of the important software which is used to analyze the foundation and slabs. The basic details about the safe software has been explained in one of the other video. I'll give you the link in the description box. You can check that link. It will be very useful to know about the safe software. In this video, we are going to discuss about the analysis and design of isolated footing. What are all the parameters we need to give design parameters. So everything we'll discuss in detail in this video. Without further delay, let's begin now. First, let's look into the problem data. Unfactored load we need to consider. Dead load is 300 kN, live load is 100 kN. So total load is 400 kN. SBC is 200 kN per meter square. Allowable settlement of footing is 25 mm. So these are all the given data. By using these data, we need to find out the size of the footing. And then we need to find out the subgrade modulus of soil, which is very important factor in order to analyze the foundation in safe software. Now let's find out the area. Area is load divided by SBC. Load divided by safe bearing capacity. So here 10% of additional load has been considered for the earth filling. So 400 multiplied by 1.1 divided by 200 which gives the area as 2.2 meter square. We know the length and breadth. From this we can find out the length and breadth. Next we need to find out the subgrade modulus. Subgrade modulus is equal to SBC divided by allowable settlement of footing. So here settlement is in millimeter that we need to convert into meter. So 200 divided by 25 divided by 1000. So we get 8000 kilonewton per meter cube as the subgrade modulus. So if you look into the plan, this is the length and breadth. So since it is a square footing, we can consider length and breadth as same value 1.48 and 1.48. Size of the column is 300 by 300 mm. Let's open the Stamp Pro software and then click on the new model. Here you have to choose this option, use built-in settings with and then here you have to select the display unit as metric SI and then region for default material is Indian and then steel section database is Indian and steel design code let it be AIC and then concrete design code shall be IS456-2000 then click on OK. Now here you have to click on this grid only option. This will be easy for us to draw the slab of the footing. Before drawing the slab, we need to define the material properties and then section properties. Go to define, click on material properties here, add new material. Region is India and then material type is concrete, standard is Indian, grade is M25 and then click on OK. So here material name is M25 and then material type is concrete and let's give the weight per unit volume as 25 kN per meter cube. If you click on this modify show material property design data here material name is M25 grade M25 and then compressive strength of concrete is given as 25 Newton per millimeter square then click on OK. We have to define other material as well that is steel rebar. Here let's select the HYSD grade 500 and then give OK. Here let's give the name as FE 500. Weight per unit volume is 78.5 kN per meter cube and then modulus of elasticity is given here. Give OK. So the steel material property and concrete material property has been added over here. Now let's add the section property. Under section property you have to select the slab section. Click on new property. Here we need to give the name as footing. Let's name it as footing. Let's assume the depth of the footing as 300 mm. So here let's give the thickness as 300 and then modeling type shall be shell thin and here let's select the type as footing and then thickness as 300 and then give ok. The footing property has been added. Next, let's add the column property. Let's consider that one as stiff. Let's give the name as stiff. And then here, let's select the material as M25 and then shell thin. And here, let's select the type as stiff and then 300 mm. The size of the column is also 300 by 300. So let it be 300 mm and then give OK. So two properties has been added. Next, let's define the subgrade modulus. So to do that, we have to go to spring properties and then area spring. Here you have to click on add new property and then name it as subgrade modulus. 
as we have calculated before the subgrade modulus is 8000 kN per meter cube and non-linear option as compression only give ok and then click on ok here now let's draw the footing slab so we can use this option we draw area around point click on this and then here you have to select the property as footing and then footing size that is 1480 and then 1480 now if you click on this point you will be getting the footing and then next we can add the column click on the property we have created as stiff and then dimension we need to give that is 300 by 300 and then click on this point again so you got the column and footing over here if you want to check the dimension you have to go to draw and draw dimension line and then you can check the dimension it is 1.48 meter so now we have completed drawing the slab footing slab and then column let's look into the 3d view you click on this extrude option so you will be having the 3d view like this let's go to plan view and then now we can assign the properties first we have to select this footing and then go to assign under shell you will be having the area spring we need to assign the subgrade modulus click on subgrade modulus and then apply ok so subgrade modulus has been assigned on the footing slab now we can assign the loads to assign the loads we need to create a joint over here to do so go to draw and then click on this draw joint object if you select here the joint is created now we can assign the load on this joint go to assign click on joint load here you have to select force and under load you have to give the load in the z direction negative 300 dead load is 300 kilo newton and then size of the load for punching shear that is 300 mm column dimension and again in the y direction also it is 300 mm apply <laughs> before that you have to select the joint over here select the joint and then apply the loads if you look into the 3d view will be visible see the load has been assigned in the downward direction now let's assign the live load as well select this joint go to assign joint load force and here you have to select live load and then the load is 100 kilo newton apply ok so the loads has been assigned now let's create the load combination go to define load combination here add new combo the combo one we can make it as service load combination service load here let's add the live load as well so the factor is going to be one service load is to check the deflection so we are going to make the service load combination here that is unfactored load combination give ok that is added next let's add another combination that is strength limit state let's make it as ultimate combination ultimate load so here the factor is going to be 1.5 and then add here also live load you can add 1.5 and then ok give ok load combination has been added now we have completed modeling the footing now we can do the design preferences go to design concrete design and then here view or revise preferences here design code is is456-2000 factor of safety for concrete is 1.5 and for steel it is 1.15 then let's check the cover 50 mm we need to give since it is a footing slab and then preferred rebar size we can change it to 12 mm give okay now let's do the analysis click on run analysis we will take some time to analyze the footing the analysis has been completed now let's check the deflection go to display and then show deformed shape here you have to select the load combination select service load combination click apply ok so here we can check the deflection it is 22.7 on four the corners on all the corners the deflection is 22.7 so we know the allowable settlement of the footing is 25 mm as we have seen in the data problem data so the deflection which we got over here is 22.7 uh, here it is showing as 22.9 that is fine so the deflection is less than the allowable settlement allowable displacement so the footing is satisfying the deflection criteria next let's check the soil pressure go to display show force or stress diagram and then here select soil pressure select combo select the service load and then give apply ok so here the soil pressure you have got is 193. 7 
kilo newton per meter square the unit is given here soil pressure is 183.77 kilo newton per meter square however the soil pressure which we have taken in the problem is 200 kilo newton per meter square so the soil pressure is less than the soil pressure we have taken so this footing satisfy the soil bearing criteria the next important factor is punching shear that we need to check so before checking the punching shear before checking the punching shear we need to run the design check so go to design under concrete design you have to do the design check now you have to go to display and then show punching shear design see it is showing the value that is 0.682 for punching shear the permissible value will be 1 as per the code so if it is less than 1 then we can continue with the size of the footing and the depth of the footing if it is more than 1 again we need to revise the depth of the footing in order to satisfy the punching shear criteria if you want to check the punching shear calculation just right click over here you will be getting this window so here you can see the calculation effective slab thickness punching shear perimeter everything is given and then finally the punching shear ratio is calculated as 0.68 close this one and now we are going to do the design part so before doing the design we need to add the design strips for the rebar just unlock this model and then go to draw you have to select draw design strip and then let's select the strip over here and here let's keep the layer as a and then strip width let's keep it as 1000 mm that is 1 meter so for 1 meter strip we are going to calculate the rebars so let's keep it as 1000 mm and then you can just Let's draw the design strip like this, let's keep and then again select the design strip option and here let's select the layer as B. Let's draw the design strip like this. If you want to check the design strip width, we can get it from this display option. Click on the set display and then here under other assignments, we will be having the option as design strip object. Here if you click on the show width and then give apply and OK, it will show you the design strip width and then again we can deselect it, apply, OK. Now let's do the analysis. Now let's do the slab design. Go to display and then show slab design. You will be getting this window. So here you have to select the design basic. Let's select the strip based design and then rebar location, top rebar and bottom rebar. Reinforcing display type is show rebar intensity and then here you have to select the strip direction. We have two layers. First let's select layer A and then give apply. See in layer A the reinforcement is shown. Bottom reinforcement and then top reinforcement. Bottom reinforcement is 1106.5 mm square per meter. The unit is shown here and then top it is 105.75 mm square per meter. We know the area of steel. We need to find out the spacing. As we have given the design preferences 12 mm dia bar. Let's take 12 mm dia bar area and then let's find out the spacing. So to find out spacing, we need to use area of 1 12 mm dia bar. So that is 113 mm square. We need to find out the spacing for 1006.5 mm square area. So 113 multiplied by 1000. This is to the conversion because the area whichever we are going to enter here is millimeter square per meter. So in order to convert that per meter into mm we are taking like this so we get the spacing as 112 mm here we can select the typical uniform reinforcing specified below this option we can select this option typical uniform reinforcing specified below and then here you have to select the bar size as 12 mm both top and bottom and then spacing we can reduce it to 110 112 the spacing we got it and we can make it as a round of number and then 110 we can give and then click on apply so for layer 1 we have done the spacing and next let's do the same thing for layer b so for layer for layer a we have calculated the spacing of the bar next let's do the same thing for layer B. Uncheck this one and then select layer B and then select this 
apply let's look into the area see bottom is 1077.61 and top is 111.32 so we need to find out the spacing for this 1077.6 as we have seen before we need to take the area of one column diabar and then we need to find out the spacing for the required area 1077.6 we are getting the spacing as 104.8 mm so here let's select this one and then let it be 12 mm bar here instead of 104 let's give 100 mm spacing then make it as a round of figure and then you can give 100 mm give apply next let's do the detailing go to detailing and here you have to select this bar selection under this you have to choose slab mat or footing bar selection here you can select footing and then select default after that you can do the detailing check after detailing you will be getting this window so here footing one rebar details is given for layer a and layer b if you click on layer a top bars you will be having so it is showing the top bar but by default it has chosen the die of the bar and spacing if we want particular dia and spacing we can change it here so if we wanted to change according to our design the rebar details we can change it over here we are doing it for top bar that is that we can choose at 10 mm because the area was very less and then by default we can give 250 mm spacing see here it has changed and then if you select bottom bar that will be showing the default reinforcement and spacing you can change over here you can change the bar size as 12 mm and spacing as 110 it has been changed over here next under layer b you can change top layer bar size as 10 because top is very less and then spacing we can change it to 250 mm and bottom layer it is 12 mm and then spacing is 100 for bottom layer spacing is 100 for layer b next let's look into the view to look into the view this is the plan view and top bar if you see plan top bar both side top bar is 10 at 250 mm center to center layer a and layer b similarly bottom bar if you look at it is 100 and this one is 110 so both detail has been given here and then if you want to look into the section section a details are given here this is 12 mm bar and this is 10 mm bar and 3d view will be like this we have the bottom layer and then top layer so friends that's all about the design and detailing of isolated floating using safe software if you like the content hit the like button also share it with your friends and if you have any queries you can post it in the comment box your comments are always welcome and if you really want to support the channel so Super thanks button has been enabled in our channel you can log into your account and then below this video there will be a button called super thanks and by clicking on that you can pay some minimum amount and then support this channel also don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you for watching